We just started the beta phase of the new Comp and Image Managers. These will be released in Appraise at 12.0, which we're hoping to start rolling out um, kind of slowly in waves to folks. Um, in uh, or probably mid to late next month is when you'll pro most of you will probably get it. Um, right now we're on 11.9 point something. I'd have to look at. I have to go look it up. Um, this will be appraise at 12. Now this will be not be the rewritten version of appraise that you may have been hearing about. This will be the last version of what we're calling legacy appraise it, the appraise it that you've been using for the last few years. We are currently in the process of rewriting appraise it from the ground up. It's going to have a lot of new features. It'll be um, it'll be comfortable and recognizable to you if you've been using appraise it, but there will be a lot of extra new features um, that you guys have been asking for for a long time. Basically, not to get too technical, but we had to scrap the way that we were writing appraise it before because it just wasn't allowing us to do a lot of the stuff that you guys were asking for. So we're going to be redoing it completely uh, from the ground up. We're probably about 80% done now. Um, and then there'll be a, a lengthy testing phase on that, and then we'll probably begin rolling it out to you folks sometime during the summer. We had hoped to, to want to, we really wanted to do it in early spring, um, but some other things have come up that have kind of slowed us down. Uh, you know how these lenders and, and AMCs are, they're always wanting something different or something new, so we've been having to pull over to the side of the road and, and do a lot of that stuff. So it slowed us down a little bit, but right now we're on target for uh, beginning to roll out appraise it the rewritten version of Appraise It, which will be Appraise It 14. Um, this is Appraise It 12 that we're talking about today, and then we'll be releasing 14. We're going to skip 13 just because we're a little superstitious. Um, so it'll be Appraise It 14, and that'll come out in the uh, in the summer. Um, okay. Uh, so this is going to be Appraise It 12. We'll roll it out next month. Um, it's going to have a couple of small changes, some under the hood changes for AI Ready to make it a little bit more robust and, and easier for us to, to fix little issues that we find. So that's not really sexy or anything that you'll be interested in. The big thing you're going to notice with Appraise at 12 is going to be um, the updated Comp and Image Managers. And that's what we're going to show you today. Now, this is in a beta one phase. Um, there are um, a number of customers right now who are using it and testing it out for us. To those customers, I know there's a couple of them in uh, watching the video, um, you will be getting beta 2 uh, hopefully later this week, beginning of next week. Um, and that will be incorporating some of the changes that you guys have recommended and that you've contacted us about and some small bugs that we found. Um, for the rest of you, if you are interested in beta testing a pr uh, uh, version 12, you're more than welcome to. Either give us a call and tell the technical support person that answers the phone that you'd like to beta test it, or you can contact me directly, beta, B-E-T-A, beta at sfrap.com, or you can use the training at sfrap.com. I get both those emails. Um, my name's Matt Johnson, by the way. I'm in Silva, North Carolina, um, in the mountains of Western North Carolina, kind of near Asheville. That's where our technical offices are located. You may have talked to our sales department. They're down in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, but we're up here in North Carolina. Um, so whenever you talk to tech technical support, you're talking to us up here in North Carolina. Um, I'm in the same office with them. I work with all the programmers. I do the training um, and the customer contact and all of the Facebook and Twitter stuff. And then I also work on uh, development and, uh, and testing. Um, so, this is to introduce you to Comp and Image Manager, um, and we'll go over kind of the specifics here in just a minute. Um, the first thing I do want to tell everybody, what I'm going to show you is still in beta, it is not written in stone, and it is still evolving, because what we do is we do the core programming, and we get the user interface to what we think you guys are going to want, and then we start rolling it out to some actual customers, and then we get their feedback and see what they like about it. Um, so what you're going to see here may change a little bit, but for the most part, this is what we're going to be rolling with. There are going to be a couple changes, which I'll note along the way, because I don't have the updated <clears throat> version with the changes uh, in it that we got from, from some of our beta feedback. Um, so just keep that in mind. Now, the Comp and Image Manager that you have been using um, was the basis for this new Comp and Image Manager. Um, there's a lot of similarities and most of the stuff that you could do in the old one you'll still be able to do in the new one. We've completely overhauled the database backend and the way that it um, indexes all of your reports to make it a lot quicker. For instance, um, when you first install this program it is going to need to re-index all of your reports because we completely changed all that database stuff. But the good news is, is that if you're on, first of all, if you're on a fast computer with multiple cores, it's going gonna, it's gonna to take advantage of your, four, your quad core or your dual core processor when doing this. Also, if you're on a network, 
and you have five computers on your network, it's going to split the workload of indexing all those reports uh, amongst all uh, five of those computers. It's also going to continue to index reports as long as you're not using your computer, even when you close appraise it. So at night, um, once you've installed version 12, just go ahead and leave one or two or all of your computers on overnight and while you're not using your computer it'll continue indexing your reports and use that idle process time uh, to go ahead and get that job done so it'll so it should index a lot quicker uh, for you in the long run um, the other thing we've done to the program is uh, in the new version of appraisal appraisal version 14 you will not be able to use photographic plus so we needed to come up with a viable uh, replacement for photographic plus um, a lot of you have used Photographic Plus for a while, and you know, Photographic Plus isn't exactly a great, it's, it's an old, outdated program. Um, I've always had a lot of problems with some of its user interface. Um, it's kind of complicated. So what we're setting out to do is to make, um, to reduce the number of clicks and make things a little bit more intuitive so you can figure, out them on, figure them out on your own, or we can just do a quick training session for you and you'll be able to pick up um, how, to, how, to, how to use this program. Um, this program does basically everything that Photographic Plus did. It does it in a different way, you know, kind of merging it into the framework of the existing Compact Image Managers. Um, but it should be able to accomplish everything that you were doing in Photographic Plus. Now, a couple of our betas have been a little confused on why they need Compact Image Manager. And the, the actual answer to that is this program is not necessarily for everyone. If you're someone that goes and gets all of your comps from MLS or whatever every time you do an appraisal and you don't really have a use for archiving all of your old information, then you probably won't use this all that much. You may use the image manager for popping photos into your appraisal report, but you may not actually use the, the comp um, um, facet of this. So a lot like, in a lot of the ways that some people didn't use um, everything in Photographic Plus that it could do, we're envisioning this actually being you know quite similar in, in, in that way. Um, if you are a person that has a need, like you want to be able to go back and look at all of your comps that you've done before and maybe reuse them, then this program is going to be for you. Um, if you are the type of person that goes out and collects information about your comps for later use, say on Monday you know that you're going to be doing, you, you want to go hit seven addresses to kind of get photos of them and maybe some basic information about them for possible use as a comp, or maybe you're going out and you're taking photos of a subject you're going to be doing later in the week or maybe next week, then Comp Manager will be for you because one of the things that we've added to Comp Manager from its, its current, what you guys are using, um, is that we have added the ability for you to be able to add comps and to edit comps. Now the previous comp manager, all you could do is just basically look at all of the comps that you had before that you had used in a previous appraisal. And that was really all you could do. With the new comp manager, you'll be able to do that and we'll be, we'll be grabbing all that information automatically for you and it'll be added into the database so you won't have to worry about you know manually doing all that. But you'll also be able to take one of those records and modify it, which will create a new record. So you'll be able to update it with new information. And you'll be able to add an entire comp from scratch if you want to, or you could just add a front view, rear view, street scene, and an address, and then leave it at that. So it's much more versatile, and you kind of get to choose the way that you want to use it. So what we're going to do now is I am going to go ahead and show you um, kind of the first beta version of the Comp and Image Manager. So here it is. Now once again if you're having problems seeing it, I understand this is kind of a low resolution stream so what you may want to do is in the lower right hand corner of the video window uh, just hit that little square and it'll blow it up to, to, to take up the whole screen for you. And let me just uh, Alright, ah, okay, so somebody said that there's a lot of reflection off my glasses, sorry about that. So we'll just take the glasses off. Um, okay, so this is the Comp and Image Manager. Now, this is the Comp Manager, actually. There's, there's two different programs. There's the Comp Manager, and then there's the Image Manager. Um, the Comp Manager is what we're going to look at first. And the Comp Manager is going to be, basically, is the database component of, of, of both programs. Um, some of you may have been using the old image manager and um, that had a, a small database component with it. We've removed that in favor of moving all the databasing into 
uh, into the actual comp manager itself. So when you first start the program, you're going to be presented with this. And it may, when you, when you first do it, it may look a little intimidating, like what am I seeing here? You know, um, what is all of this? Not exactly sure. Um, and what this is, is this is kind of your search screen. Now you'll look at it and you'll notice that you have these little cards here. And um, what these cards are, are this is kind of a, a user interface that we came up with in the previous version of, of Comp Manager, the first version. Um, and what it allows you to do is it allows you to be able to customize what you see as far as searching. And over here on the right hand side we actually have search schemes. So much like your print schemes, you can actually save these schemes for later use. Now, in the final version of this new comp manager, one of the things we're adding because of customer feedback is the ability to one not only be able to save kind of the uh, the number of tiles that you want here, but also what's contained inside of them. So you can do a separate search scheme, say for um, the Monford area of Asheville, North Carolina. So if you what you could do is you could just type in say the zip code for Monford, um, and then or maybe a city, maybe it's a suburb. Um, you could type in the city and then call it Monford, and maybe there's some characteristics that you're always going to be searching for in the Monford area. You get this. You get to decide how you're going to um, how you're going to organize all of those schemes, just like you do with print schemes. Now, there is a default scheme called General. Now, the name of that may change, but for right now, it's called General. And what we did was we used Photographic Plus as a guide for the general scheme. So when you first open it up, it's basically going to have all the stuff that you were able to search for in Photographic Plus. But this is not the full breadth of everything that you can search for in this program. Um, yeah, this chat thing is probably not the best thing in the world. So, <laughs> all right. So um, this is not everything that you can search by. Um, but this is a good starting place. Now, if you look at this and you're like, all right, I'm never going to you know, search by design style. Why would I just, there's no reason I'm going to search by that. What you can do is you can just hit this little X here, and then it goes away, and then they all reshuffle. Right now, you can't order these in a way that you want. Um, that's something that we do have on our list of things to add. Maybe you're never going to search by census tract. You hit the X, it goes away. If you ever want to add it again, this little pull down here under parameters, these are the different cards, quote unquote cards that you can add. So if uh, you want to search by site view, you can select that and then click add item. And then site view will be added in, and here it is down here. I've just added site view. If I don't want it anymore, I can just hit X there and delete it. And then I can save this as a custom search scheme. So if I want to do save as, we'll just call this one say training. <clears throat> hit save, and there we go. Now. Um, the reason we use these cards is we didn't want to present you with this gigantic list of things to search by because a lot of you only search by one, two, or three things. So literally what you can do is you could just X out, delete all of these, make a custom search scheme, delete all of them, set it as default, and then maybe you're only presented with the, the street, the city, the state, and the zip. And that's all you want to search by. Then those are the only cards that you need to search, that you need to see. Or you can you can add all of them if you want. Um, and the way that the searching works is it's an inclusive uh, search. So right now I haven't entered anything. So if I hit View Results, I'm going to see everything. And we'll go back to the screen in a minute. But that's not what I want. Obviously, I want to see everything that's in the state of North Carolina. Well, obviously, most of you only search, do, do searches in one state. So maybe you'll go ahead and in your specific um, uh, search, you will just have North Carolina there. And you'll just go ahead and pre-fill it in. Um, and then that'll be your, 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 your custom scheme. But this is an inclusive search, and it, it builds on top of itself. So if you say, I want to see, I want to see everything in the zip code 28801, and I want to see everything that is, let's say, between $100,000 and $300,000. So when I do a search, and I don't even know if it'll pull up anything. I won't. See, I have a very small database here. But if I did a search, then it would show me everything that was in zip code 28801 that was between a sale price of $100,000 and $300,000. And then I hit search and I'd see my, my results. Now what I'm going to do here is um, I'm going to clear everything. And because I have a small database, I'm just going to go ahead and do view results. 
And then you'll see that this is the test database, so I've got weird photos in here. Obviously that's not my comp. Um, these are just test images that I used that I took at an air show down in Charlotte. So um, I, I'm in aviation nuts, so you might see some, um, you know, like a Donner aircraft in here or a Learjet or a Beach King Air or whatever. So um, or a jet engine. So that's that's why you're seeing that kind of stuff. These are just these are just images I pulled off my iPhone just to be able to use in testing. But some of these are actual, you know, real addresses here. So 125 Mound Avenue, Carlsbad, California. And and, and if you do some type of search, then this is where your results are going to be. And you'll see that we're going back to that card scheme again, where um, we're, our, we're going to be using these cards. And it's a concept you're going to see throughout the program. So here are these cards, and um, what you can do is that you'll see there's a little X up here. If you click on that, it's going to say, are you sure you want to permanently delete this record? Be careful doing that, because if you say yes, it's gone. Um, now, if it's a indexed one, then you can just re-index all of your reports and you'll get it back. But, you know, don't go deleting records from here because then they'll just be, you know, but, you know, if, if you need to delete them, then go ahead. If it's if it's a junk comp, um, like this one right here, if it's a junk comp, say yes, boom, it's gone. Now you'll see whatever comp you are on turns blue. And by default, we have, uh, we have some options down here. Now, by default, um, let me see if that, yeah, okay. Um, when you when you use one now when you when you've selected a current comp it's going to turn blue if you use a comp in your appraisal report it's going to turn gray it's going to kind of ghost out and then when you transfer them then they, it'll it'll disappear from here um, however there will be a um, a little checkbox here that you'll be able to check so that when you drag something over then that comp will will basically disappear that way you'll know which comps that you've actually used now with these records, it gives you a photo, it gives you the address, which in this case just says Comp 8, so let's use this as an example here. Um, it's going to give me the address, 125 Mound Avenue in Carlsbad, California. It's going to give me the sale price, the GLA, the, um, uh, the rooms, the, you know, and some, you know, the closing date. And it's also going to have a little tag here that says UAD, so I know that this comp is a UAD, whereas this one was not. So this comp is not UAD, this one is UAD. That way you can only use UAD comps if you're doing a UAD report and make your life a little bit more simplistic. Now, what if I want to see a little bit more information about this particular address? We have three buttons here. One is Photos, Details, and Edit. If I click on Photos, it'll show me all of the photos that are associated with that address. So in this case, this was a comp, so I only have a front view. But if I was looking at a subject, I'll have the front view, rear view, street scene, and any general photos um, here as well. And I can actually reassign them to different views if I wanted to. We'll click X up here to close it out. Um, details, if I click on details, I'm gonna be able to see all the information about this particular address and it's everything that we have on this particular address. So if I scroll over to the right here, you'll see that I have more information. If I want, I can type in some personal notes here about that particular address as well. Maybe saying that, um, I don't know, that this address, the person that lives here doesn't like having their, their house photographed, so be careful, whatever. Just something you can put here to kind of um, remind yourself. But this is all the data that you can then look at and see if this is a good, viable comp that you can use. Over here on the right, this is showing me all of the comps and the comp addresses and the photos that I currently have in the report. Right now, uh, in appraisal, I have open an active report, so I, I have actual photos and addresses already in it. Um, right now, I'm looking at sales comparables. If I pull this down, I can also look at uh, my rental comparables. Pull this down, maybe I can look at my uh, competing listings, which don't have any photos in them right now. Um, and then I can also look at other uh, photo pages. So I can look at my general photos for that for, for whatever the subject is in that particular address right now. So I'm going to come back over here to sales comparables. In this particular appraisal, maybe I want, let's close this out, maybe I want to replace 125 Mound Avenue. So maybe I've got this, uh, this Ridge Road in here on comp number seven. What I can do is I can click on this to clear it out of the report. And now you'll see it's just kind of blank. And then I can click and I can drag 125 Mound Avenue over here. And then that'll be replaced in the report whenever I click on Transfer to Report. 
if there are any changes that I've made kind of behind the back of Comp Manager, um, what I can do is um, I can hit this little refresh button. So if I went over to appraise it, made some changes, um, and I need to have those changes be reflected in the Comp Manager, all I have to do is hit this little refresh button and it'll, it'll retrieve all the report data once again. Now, what if I want to make some changes to this particular comp? Well, what I can do is I can click on this edit button. Now, it's gonna come up with a little uh, uh, message here that says indexed, re so in case you can't read it, index records cannot be edited. Now this is an index record and what that means is this record was grabbed from a previous report I had done automatically. That's what indexed record means. Index records cannot be edited. Your changes will be saved to a copy of this record instead. So what this means is, if you make a change to an indexed record, we don't want to ever destroy information. So we're going to make a new record in your database with this updated info. And then you'd be like, well, now I've got two, two records of the same address. One of the things that Comp Manager allows you to do is you can have um, multiple records for the same address. Now, in, in Photographer Plus, you couldn't do that. You could only have one record, and that was it. Well, maybe you want to have a UAD version, a non-UAD version. Maybe you have three different records for three different time periods that you've used that address. All of them will be in Comp Manager. Now, by default, Comp Manager, when you do a search, is only going to show you the most recent, um, the most recent occurrence of that address in the database. Um, when you're searching, though, there's a little checkbox back on the search screen. Um, include older duplicate addresses. That's, cho that's chosen by default. So if you want to uncheck that, then you will only see the most recent occurrence of that particular address. If it's checked, then you will see all occurrences of that address. I recommend keeping it unchecked, and that way you're, only, you probably want to, you're probably only interested in the most recent data anyways. So leave it unchecked, and then you will only see, that, that'll pare down your results a lot more. So you won't see multiple instances of the same address. All right, so we'll scroll down here. All right, now, if I want to take um, 125 Mound Avenue in Carlsbad, California, I want to make a change to it before I use it. So I can click on Edit. I'm going to make a copy. Yes, I understand that. And now I'm going to be presented with um, this information here where it has all the existing information plus the information I can still add to it. And this is a tabbed interface. So up here at the top, you'll see that I've got my general, my common stuff, my unit information, and then other information, and then photos. When you click on photos, you'll be able to drag additional photos in here uh, into this address. So let's say I want to add, because that was that was actually just a, um, a comp, but maybe I've taken some additional photos of that comp, maybe a street scene. We'll say this is a street scene. So what I can do is I can click and I can drag that over. And what if you look here, I have my directory tree, so I'm looking at maybe a flash drive or maybe my photos directory or something like that. So if I click and I drag it over here where it says drag photos here, this little spot, it's going to add that photo in, which is what it just did here. And of course, on your screen, you'll have more real estate to work with. Um, and now I need to say what this is. So maybe this is actually a street scene. So I can click the drag, I can click the, uh, the down button here. And I can select street scene or I could type in some other custom one here and then click on save and now it's updated that particular record so if I go back into the record if I look under photos for that record and this is the record here um, well there may be a bug there because I've added a, a photo and I'm not seeing it so like I said this is still in beta so it looks like I found a bug there oh no no that's the original one so my updated one um, is here. So here's my updated one. There we go. Um, when I click on it for photos, you'll see now there are my two photos. Because remember, um, I can't edit an index record, which is what this was. So it created a new record for 125 Mound Avenue, which is going to be a new record. So if I were to do a search now, this is the one that would come up. And there's my street scene, and there's my front view. All right. Now, if I've made some changes and I want to make those changes, go ahead and transfer them to the report. I would just click on transfer to report. I can also go back to my search, and by the way, you'll see here page one of three. So I've got 72 records that were found, and I can switch to different pages here by using this little arrow button. So here now I'm on page two and page three. So if you do a search and you get a lot of results, remember that the first things that you see are not necessarily everything. So you may want to take a look at some of the other pages, and maybe there's a better fit for what you're looking for. 
And then I can, of course, go back to a search and do another search. And then I have this third button. This is a new button here. And this is one of the features that I'm most excited about. And this is export the file. And if I go back to the search, search screen, you'll see that there is also an import data as well. So I can import data and I can export the file. So what does this mean? Well, there's a really cool new feature now where you can um, <clears throat> do a search. Maybe, maybe do a really broad search like I want to see everything that's in zip code 28801. Or maybe you want to even do a bigger. I want to see everything that is in Asheville, North Carolina. <clears throat> then you can take that um, search and these are all the results. In this case, I came up with 71 results. I can hit export to file. And then I can name that, you know, call it, by default it's going to be called export. Maybe I save it to my desktop. It's going to be called export. And change it to, you know, bill. And it'd be bill.sqlite. All right? So then what I can do is I can put that on a flash drive. You might be able to email it if it's a small um, search, but if it's a lot of stuff, you'll probably have to put it on a flash drive, and then I can drive it down to Bill's office and give it to Bill, and then um, what he can do is he can open up Comp Manager, let me go back to the search, and he can click on Import Data, and now he can select Comp Manager Database, import that file, and now everything that I, all those comps that I just did a search on, are now incorporated into his database. So you guys can now start sharing comps back and forth with each other. So if, if, if you know, you got a new guy who's just starting out, he's like, hey, can I see all the comps you have like in Asheville, North Carolina? You could do a, a broad search, find all of those, save that, send it to him on a thumb drive or whatever, <clears throat> and then he can import it. And he's gonna import all of the photos and all of the data. Because in the database now, we're, we're, we're embedding all of the images into the actual database itself. <clears throat> So you'll be able to, uh, whenever you do uh, do an export, so you can give it to somebody else, they're going to get the photos and the data, and it's all going to be incorporated in, and boom, now they've got it in their database, and they can search it just like they would do anything else. So you guys can now share that data back and forth. All right, um, let me think if I've forgotten anything, and then we'll start taking questions here in a minute. Um, I think that is everything. Now, there will be a little help button right now. This doesn't really go anywhere because we haven't written the help yet. We're in the process of doing that. Um, but you'll be able to hit help here and you'll be able to see the videos that we're going to... We're going to make some training videos. We're going to have much more uh, involved specific training um, like what we're doing now. This is just an introduction. Um, so keep that in mind. This is not something that you need to know how to use right now. Okay, this isn't meant to be a training session. This is meant um, more to be... Um, um, this is meant more to be a, um, an introduction to it. So we're going to have lots more videos that we're going to be making um, and that we're going to be putting out there and we'll be doing tons of these training sessions to help you guys get more comfortable with this program before it rolls out. Now the other facet of this that I want to show you, and let me go ahead and get it pulled up here, is going to be the image manager. Now these are both going to be under the tools menu, which is where they are now. <clears throat> And the image manager is much more simplistic than the comp manager. So if you're somebody that um, if you're somebody that um, that doesn't really need to keep track of all your comps, or you just want something simple to be able to put all of your images into a report, then what you're going to be interested in is you're going to be interested in the um, <clears throat> in the image manager. Now, if you've used the image manager before, this is going to look very familiar to you. It's all going to work the same way. Um, basically, the image manager is meant to be a program to easily grab images off of your, um, your memory card and be able to pop them into, um, pop them into your uh, appraisal report. Real simple. Um, so here, over here on the left-hand side, I've got a tree view. Um, Right now, I'm on a network drive where I've got um, these iPhone, I call it iPhone test images. But of course, you could very easily go to a thumb drive if you had one. And then once you navigate to that particular location, um, it will always go back to that location. And you'll see thumbnails of all the images that are contained in that, in that section. You'll see here, I've got, these are just goofy images that came off my iPhone. There's my dog. Um, 
there's my other dog. So, I mean, you know, these are not, obviously these are not um, house images, but these are just for use in testing. Um, and these are large five megapixel images, and that's why I'm using them. Over here on the right-hand side, you will see a representation of all of the photo pages that are in your report. And I can use this little pull-down menu, and I can navigate to any of the photo pages in my report and then see what's in there. So if I go to Interior Photos, these the Interior Photos is in them. It's used for RELs. If I go to the Interior Photos is in them, I got the kitchen, the main living area, master bath, etc. And if I don't want these images, I just click on the little uh, X to clear them out. Are you sure you want to clear the photo? Yes. And it's just as simple as that. So I'm going to clear all of these. Now I've cleared that addendum. Of course, none of this takes effect you hit the until you hit transfer to report. So if you accidentally do something and you, you're like, uh-oh, what did I just do? You can just back out of the program and when it asks you if you want to transfer the images, just say no. So now that I've cleared that addendum, I can fill them back up again. So maybe we'll take this uh, front end of a C-130. We'll say that's the kitchen. Maybe the main living area is the cockpit of that C-130. There we go. Master bath, we'll say, is the tail section it's from the Charlotte Air National Guard. Um, and then maybe this Donner here we'll put as our bath number two. And then um, you can use this little pull down to, uh, to say, to, you know, to label it. Now the interior photos did them is a little weird because it already has main, uh, these, these main labels, but you could put some information in there and say maybe like, maybe this is kitchen number two or something like that. If we go here to, uh, let's say, general photos, we've got some general photos here. And uh, here's Water Rock Knob, and I actually just went ahead and called it Water Rock Knob. Um, but I could pull that down, and I could call it, say, that's the library, or I could type something in uh, manually if I wanted to. And then I could hit the little plus here, and that'll save that label. Or if I don't want that label anymore, I just hit minus, and it deletes the label out. Real simple. Once you're done with all this, you'll just hit transfer to report, and they'll be transferred in. Now, um, a couple of things that we've actually changed based on the beta that will be in our beta 2 and will be in the final version that you all get is that you'll see when I click on an actual image it kind of turns blue. That's to signify the image that I'm currently using. If I drag that image over, what will happen by default is that the image will turn ghosted gray, like really light gray. That's a visual indicator to let me know that I've already used that image. Now I could use it twice if I want to, but it's going to give you a visual, a visual indicator that you've used that image. That's by default. However, if I click on Recycle Used Images, what will happen um, is if I click and drag that over and it's been used in the report, it will disappear. Now, it hasn't been deleted, it's just going to go to the Windows Recycling Bin. So worst case scenario, you can always go back into the Recycling Bin and restore it and you know undelete it, basically. Optimized Images, what this is going to do is this is going to um, resize the image. So if you've got a giant 10 megapixel image because you've got a nice fancy camera, you took a giant 10 megapixel image of a house, you don't need a 10 megapixel. You don't need a 10 megapixel image in your report, obviously. So, if you have optimized images checked, which is checked by default, it's going to resize that image um, to make sure that um, uh, that it'll fit in your report. Um, and and the main reason for that is you don't want to send a PDF that's really big, or you also um, you don't want to send um, something through to AI Ready that has really large images in it because AI Ready has this really dumb. 10 megabyte limit on the size. Of course, they want thousands of photos, but they're only going to give you 10 megabytes to do it. So this will keep you from running into that problem of, of, of having too much data in your, in your report. And there's another little checkbox here for share photo descriptions. This is if you want to share them over the network. I believe this may actually go away because we're just going to share them by default. All right. Um, also, there's a search tab up here. If you've been using the image manager before, you may have noticed that it did have a search function, a very limited, simple search function where you could look for an address and then see all the photos associated with that address. Um, we're kind of trying to consolidate that, that, all that into one program. So if you need to look for a photos associated with an address, you're going to do that in the, in the comp manager now. And if you click on this little search tab, it's just going to give you a little message to say the search feature is now part of comp manager. And if you click on this little button, it's going to launch comp manager for you automatically. Now always with both programs, remember any changes that you make, you're going to want to do transfer to report. And I don't think that I can actually show you this per se um, with the way that I'm doing um, this screen sharing, but two, new, two cool new features that we have in the uh, image manager is if you double click on one of these images, it's going to open it up in the default Windows photo viewer. So you'll be able to see a much larger representation of that image that also works in the um, comp manager. 
And then if I right click and I select edit, and by the way, if you right click on an image, you can do uh, delete, and you can look at the properties of it. But if I click on edit, it's gonna open up that image in the, um, in the uh, Microsoft Paint application. Um, and then you can make changes like, you know, um, you know, blur out somebody's face or do something like that. And then all you have to do is then just uh, save the image and then it's automatically updated here in the view so that you'll be able to see your, your changes. That's real helpful if you want to blur out a, a license plate or something like that. All right, well, you know what? I think that um, as far as an introduction, now remember everything I've just shown you is a little bit fluid, okay? So just keep that in mind that based on the feedback that you guys are going to give us, and I encourage you to give your give me, um, and I would prefer it in email. So if you have some feedback, just on basically on what you've seen so far or some questions, just send it to training at sfrep.com, or and, and then I'll, I'll get it and I'll be able to respond to it, and we may be able to incorporate it in. If you're interested in trying this stuff out for yourself, beta at sfrep.com is going to be... Um, is going to be the email address that you're going to want to use. But for right now, I'm going to start taking questions. For those of you that are still in this wonky chat room, I apologize. I, you know, I tried to test all this stuff out before, but I didn't. I wasn't able to test it with a lot of people. Um, so there's evidently a 10 limit on there. So if you're not in the chat room, feel free to email. Don't use Facebook, but I'll, I'll take a look at Facebook in a minute. But email training at sfrep.com. I'm going to read your question to everybody and then we'll answer it. If you have any questions and you're in the chat room, go ahead and just type them into the chat room now and I'll be happy to answer them. Now, I know I've got quite a few um, questions in here, so I'm going to start going through the emails first in the chat room. I'll come back to you here in just a minute. Uh, let's see here. Do, 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 do. We'll start with, all right, we'll start with Gerald who asks, um, can you check for more than one town at a time if the subject borders um, two or three towns? Um, not at the same time. You'll need to do two searches. So you'll need to do, um, if you don't know what the town, what town it's actually in, um, just you'll just have to do a search for two towns. There's a technical limitation to the way that you search a really large database. Um, and it's not like Google, so you can't say blah, blah, or blah, blah. Well, actually, you know what? I take that back. You could technically do that by doing, say it was in Asheville or Weaverville. So you could type in Asheville space Weaverville and it should show you all of them that have either or of those. I'll have to double check on that, but I'm pretty sure you can. Um, so I'm gonna give you a tentative yes on that and um, if, uh, and then I'll check on that for you, okay? So follow up with me, just uh, send me an email to follow up with me on that one. Matter of fact, I've got your email here, I'll just follow up with you. So give me a tentative yes on that one. Uh, let's see, Tim Walker, will the new comp manager be able to have a UAD comp entered and then able to be loaded into a non-UAD report later having all the information properly arranged? That's impossible. Um, we can't really apply that type of intelligence to the program to convert UAD information to non-UAD because the problem we're going to run into there is that you're not going to like the way that we phrase it or whatever. Now, the good news is, is that there's unless it's personal preference by your lender or your AMC, there's nothing that will prevent you from putting UAD information into a non-UAD report. I will tell you this, non-UAD reports are gonna be more and more and more rare, especially the ones that are currently UAD. There are rumors that they're gonna expand UAD. We'll see what happens there. I don't have anything concrete on that, but um, if you thought UAD was going away, unfortunately it's not. Um, but no, uh, if you take a UAD comp and you put it into a non-UAD report, it's going to be dumped in there with UAD and then you're going to have to go back and then change it if you wish. We just really don't, one, that's really complicated programming for us to try to do. We're under a little bit of a time restraint because um, we've got to get back to rewriting appraise it. There's going to be a lot of cool new features that are going to come out and those kind of things are the things we're going to come back to um, probably in like early 2014. Once we get appraiser 14 out, stabilize, everybody's using it. In 2014, we're going to come back and then we're going to really start polishing it up um, and adding a lot of the stuff that you guys have wanted in the past. But for right now, uh, if you transfer a UAD report into a non-UAD, um, it's going to bring over that UAD formatting. But the cool thing is, is that once you fix all of that and do it the way you want, you'll now have a record of that address in both UAD and non-UAD formatting. So the next time, so you only have to do it once. Let's see what else we've got. 
Um, let's see, Shelly asks, I use all caps if I, I find that if I type street view, exit image or comp manager, when I go back in, it will show it as street view case changed. Will that happen with this new system? Um, I don't know. Um, I think that that's being done purposefully in a lot of ways because UAD does not allow you to type in all uppercase in some areas. Like in UAD specific fields, the case is very important and it's going to have mixed case. I would always recommend that you don't type in all uppercase. But I know that's going to fall on deaf ears because a lot of people, you know, you, you do it the way you want to do it and that's fine. Um, but UAD is not conducive to doing your entire report in, 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 all, in all caps. I'll just go ahead and tell you that right now. Um, to answer your question, though, I'm going to save that one. I'm going to check on that, and I'll get back to you via email. Okay, Shelly? I don't think it's going to do that, but I'm going to need to double check. But it may do that in the fact that if that's a UAD field, it may change it automatically because it needs to be properly UAD formatted. But I'll double check on that for you. Um, one from Becker Appraisals. Um, I am most excited that with the new Comp and Image Manager, I can save photos and files that are not used in a current report for future use. Um, disappointed by that in the past, and that's from Rick. Yeah, that, that when we first made the Comp and Image Manager, we did not have plans to get rid of Photographic Plus. So our reasoning was we wanted to have a, not a replacement for Photographic Plus, but we wanted to have um, a complementary program, and we wanted to differentiate it a little bit. So what we tried to do is we tried to make an easy to use program, and one of the things that was hard about Photographic Plus was managing your own database. So we wanted to take that out of the user's hands so that they didn't have to worry about that. Um, using my voice a little bit. So one of the things that we did, by the way, this is all going to be questions from here on out, so if, you, if, if you've gotten what you need, you know, feel free to go ahead and, and buzz on out of here, but we, I'll, I'll take questions until I stop getting them. So. And we can take questions on other subjects if you'd like as well. Um, but going back to what Rick said, um, we didn't really want it to be a replacement for Photographic Plus. We were going to keep selling Photographic Plus. However, Photographic Plus is so old that, and, and it's, it's programmed using an old um, programming interface that's not even supported by Microsoft anymore. Um, and it's not going to be compatible with the new stuff that we're doing, so we're going to go ahead and start phasing that. It's going to be sunsetted, retired, whatever you want to call it. In the software, we usually call it sunsetting. So it's going to be made obsolete. Um, and so we need to have something to replace it. So we, we've decided to add every add all of that functionality to the comp manager. But we also wanted to make it so that if you don't, have, don't need that functionality, it doesn't really get in your way. That's always a delicate balance um, because we can't program the, the program to do exactly what you want it to do. So there is going to be a little bit of a learning curve, especially if you're coming from Photographic Plus. But that's why we're going to have a lot of training to, to get everybody up to speed. Um, some of our betas have been a little frustrated because they're not getting the benefit of that training. But that's on purpose because one of the things that we want to do with our betas is we want to see where they run into problems. That way we know where to hit um, um, you know, extra hard when we're doing the training for you guys. So thanks a lot for that, Rick. I really appreciate that. Um, let me come back over here to the chat room. Let's see here. Is the uh, from Julie? Is the image manager networkable? Our office has several computers on a server, and we'd like to be able to share all the photos. Um, well, the image manager doesn't have any type of photo um, database connection anymore, so that really doesn't doesn't apply there. The comp manager most certainly works really well on a network, so you'll be able to share all of your listings, like your your custom. Um, image labels and stuff like that. And by the way, if you're asking stuff on Facebook, please email it. But if you already did on Facebook, I'm going to get to that in a minute. Um, <clears throat> I've got things going off all around me. <laughs> um, but yes, uh, you'll be able to do things like all, all of your comp information will be shared. Um, all of your address labels will be shared. If you add an address label, then everybody will have access to it. Um, if you add a bunch of comps, then everybody in the, in, in, on the network is going to have a bunch of comps. So, yeah, it works very well over a network. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, Carol is asking, can you search by county? Um, I believe so, but let me double check that. Um, let me open up the... 
op manager here. And of course, since that's a, a search of the database, that would be done in the comp manager. And county is not, yeah, county is in there. So yeah, county is definitely something you can search for. If it's basically, if it's in the report, you're going to be able to search by it. Oh, uh, and in appraise at 14, the, um, this is going to be, what we're doing here is we're building a master database. So all the little separate databases are all going to go away and they're all going to use this master database. Because what we're doing is we're scouring all your reports and we're gathering every little tidbit of information about every address you have in all of your appraisals and information about the appraisals themselves. Um, we're grabbing more information than we're using right now, but that's so that in future versions we can do cool things like uh, we want to add relationships to the comp and image manager. So you can see, oh, I use this comp. Well, what appraisals was this comp used or what, what, what addresses was this comp used as a comp for? You'll be able to look at those different types of relationships. Now you can't do that yet, but that's something that we do plan on adding. Um, this same database will also be used for the report, uh, the, um, the file index will use this in, in, in appraisal 14. The file index will use this, uh, the neighbor database will use this, the lender database, all of this, all these databases, these peripheral databases, they're going to use um, these, um, uh, this one master database. So we're going to, we're basically, you don't have to worry about maintaining a neighbor database anymore. You're just going to be able to search for, you know, automatically your neighbor information is going to be added in here. It's actually being added in right now. It's just the neighbor database isn't using it yet. That'll come in 14. So all this information is going to be cataloged in this gigantic database. And that makes it real easy for you to um, back up stuff too. It's going to be one file. It'll be a really big file, but it'll be one file for you to be able to back up. So, and move to a new computer. Uh, let's see here. Can you search by county? Um, do you know if the tracker program will work with Appraise at 14? That is still being debated right now. Um, I think what we're going to probably end up doing is modifying Track It to uh, to put out a new version that will look just work look and act just like the current version. Um, that will work with Appraise at 14 initially, but we have some long range plans. All of this is still on the drawing board. But we have some long range plans. Is our next kind of big project is to build a brand new business tracking program from the ground up. Um, so that that that'll be our next project. Um, I don't hold your breath. That's probably going to be a 2014 project, um, but there are um, plans to re phase out Tracker Plus as, as well. We don't have a lot of people using Tracker Plus, but we have enough that what we're going to do is we're probably going to go ahead and end up modifying it so that it will work with uh, with the new with the new appraise it. If any of that changes, I'll let you know. Um, doo -doo -doo -doo, let's see here. Will the comp manager have? Um, Will the comp manager have sales history? Currently, it does not. Um, sales history would be, we are tracking that data, but it's not currently able to be searched by yet. Um, so basically, if, if there is a morsel of data about an address in, the da in your report anywhere, we're grabbing it. We're grabbing it all. And it's all being put in that database. Now, then the 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 comp manager is now a um, it is a front end for all the information, a way for you to gather the information. So, though you can't search by that yet, and you don't have access to it yet, it is in the database, and that is you're going to start seeing some updates to the comp and image manager. Talk for a while. You need a little bit of water. Um, that is coming down the road. So the cool thing is, is since we're capturing everything anyways, you're not going to have to re-index everything. So it'll just be a feature that we'll add later on. Um, and that was from Donna. Let's see, Jennifer. Will we need to increase our server size to handle the one new large database? No. Um, <laughs> when I say it's going to be big, I mean it's going to be like two gigabytes. In 1995, two gigabytes was a lot. That's not a lot now. I mean, the smallest hard drive you can even buy now is like half a terabyte, I think. I think they've even phased out the 300 gig ones. So no, don't, don't worry about that. Unless you're running some kind of server from like 1998, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it at all. Um, let's see, Ashley asks, uh, we have two different databases for the hotkeys. 
um, and neighborhoods since the appraisers don't like to see each other's. Um, will the new database still allow for this? Um, that will come in, in appraisal 14 because remember the neighbor database is not being changed right now and neither are your, um, your F keys. The plan is for us to, yes, allow you to be able to say what you want private, what you don't want private. Um, <clears throat> the neighborhood information will be shared, um, but we will probably make a way for you can have, so you can have it localized if you wish. So. All right, let me look at the, what we've got on, well, you know what, before I go back to, because I got a couple more emails that came in, let me check. Um, let me check Facebook here. So we got people asking on there. Okay, <laughs> live TV folks. Um, let's see. Just basically looks like is he's the comp manager. Um, some people are asking if um, this is being recorded so it can be played back later. Yes, it is. Um, I'll cut out a little bit of it, but yeah, this is all being archived, um, so you'll be able to go back and, and, and watch it at a later time. Plus, this is probably not the last one that we're going to do. So uh, what I'm envisioning is doing more of these to keep you guys updated on what we're doing with your software, because at the end of the day, you guys are paying for the software. It's your software. You want to know what's being done with it, and we want your feedback. We want to know what you think about this stuff. Or I'm not an appraiser. My programmers are not appraisers. We have some appraisers that are on staff, but we're really we're wanting to make what's going to work best for you, and and that's what we're going to start doing these a lot more to keep in contact with you guys, so you can give us feedback. Of course, we will have a much better chat service at the end of this. I'm going to go out and look for something um, a little bit better to use, but. Um, yeah, we always want to hear from you, so feel free to, to send an email to, uh, to um, tech at sfrdp.com and with any suggestions or questions you might have, and we'll be happy to answer them for you, absolutely. Give us a call, chat in, do whatever you'd like to do. Um, I think that was everything. Let me just double check comments here. Um, okay. So it looks like that's most of the stuff from Facebook, but I'm just giving it a cursory glance. So if you've um, if you've sent something, a question through Facebook, just just send it through email. Just fire off an email real quick to um, training at sfrp.com. I've got it right down there. There it is. Um, training at sfrp.com if you have any questions. Uh, let's see, Charles has a question. Will the comp manager check the C and Q ratings for a prior use. Not yet, but that is something that will be introduced soon. It may be introduced before, um, it may be introduced before uh, we go public with this release, um, but at the moment it's not in the beta. As a matter of fact, that's a good question that I want to go ahead and go over with my programmer on that. Uh, let's see. And Charles, I'll get back to you on that and let you know what our plans are on that, okay? It's a good question. Uh, let's see here. Donna asks, will the new comp manager have the sales history? I think you, so either you already asked that or somebody in the chat room asked that, so we've already gone over that. Um, let's see from Tim. One problem I sometimes run into is when working on a UAD report, and typing in the Describe Condition of Property section, the UAD helper oftentimes will freeze up and cause appraisal to close, which means I have to retype everything 15 minutes. Have any bugs been found? You know, Tim, I haven't heard of that bug, um, but I don't do tech support. So I am going to drop back and punt that one over to tech support. Check with them either by sending them an email, tech at sfrap.com, I can't lose my voice there. Tech at sfrep.com uh, or give them a call. Um, it's 800 644 4051. You probably already know that, but if you don't have it on speed dial, 800 644 4051. Um, but to my knowledge, there's n there haven't been any reports of that issue other than what you've got, so I'll probably want to have them take a look at your issue specifically. 
and one from JJ. Uh, will the new database be able to include the sales that are appraised as subjects? So I'm assuming you mean if a comp is later done as a subject. So if I understand your question correctly, yes. Um, because like in Photographic Plus, you could only have one record per address. So in image or in comp manager, that's not the case. So if you had earlier done it, uh, done one as a comp, and then you later do it as a subject, and now you've got two records, one when it was a comp and one when it was a subject, and then you just hit that little checkbox to say that you want to include older uh, duplicates, and then you'll see both of them. Um, so that, that'll be handy if you redo it as a subject. You can just use, it, use the one you did as a subject, um, or you can redo it as a, uh, as a comp. Great questions. All right, let me check. Uh, Julie asks, will you notify us when new training videos become available? Um, yes, but we don't want to do it via email because that's going to become annoying. Um, and we don't want to send too many emails out because then you just you just start ignoring them. And, you know, that's not good for anybody. Sorry. So what we do is there's actually a section on our website. And let me see if I can share uh, desktop to okay so we have a section of our website you go to sfrdp.com you click on training and then you go to video library and then you may want to bookmark that this is a live view of our YouTube page. Now you can also go to youtube.com slash S-F-R-E-P-I-N-C for S-F-R-E-P Incorporated. But it's just as easy to come here. And this is a live view of our YouTube page. So when this, actu when this um, training video finishes processing and I've edited it, it will actually show up in this list. So whenever we put up new training videos, they will always show up here. So just once again, go to S-F-R-E-P.com, click on training, and then click on video library and then just bookmark that and check it periodically. That's probably going to be the easiest way. Um, but we don't want to, you know, we'll send out special trainings and, and notifications of new trainings um, to you guys, but we don't want to do it, um, like send an email out all the time because then it just gets annoying and we don't want to start spamming you guys because um, I'm about to start making a lot of training videos and you don't want to see an email for every one of them, trust me. Uh, let's see, Will from Jennifer, will we be able to delete houses out of the comp manager that may have incorrect or old data? Absolutely. Um, w once you've done your search, let me see, let me share the comp manager. There we go. So once you've done your search, oh, I'm sharing the wrong thing, hold on. Let's try this again, comp manager. All right, hopefully you guys can see this okay. All right, so once you've done your search, I'll click on View Results, you'll see here that we have these address cards, and if you see one, if you spot one that has bad data in it, like maybe one of these that doesn't even have a photo, you just hit the little X, and be very careful when you do this because there's no coming back from this. I mean, there is a way to get it back, but you're going to have to call tech support, and it's going to be a 20, 30-minute phone call. So are you sure you want to permanently delete this record? Yes, and then it's gone. But be careful doing that and make sure that you do indeed want to delete that, okay? Um, all right, so let me check my email one more time. I think we are good to go. That's going to be everything. So sorry for the technical difficulties that we had here earlier. Um, I know they were a little bit annoying, especially the chat room thing. We're going to get that squared away. This was the first time we had done something like this. So I promise you that the next time we do one of these, um, we'll have those kinks worked out for you, okay? Uh, if you have, uh, well, we got one more before we go. From Tim again, considering moving into entering field data via the iPad, will data then be downloaded straight in, into my desktop computers via some other means? Um, Tim, if you're using um, if you're using our mobile app, which is Phoenix Mobile for Appraise It. Um, and you can get that. It's a free program. You just do a search for um, SFREP in, in the App Store on iOS, and it works on the iPhone and the iPod Touch as well. 
install Phoenix Mobile, it's a free app, and when you sign up for it, when you, when you open up an account at Phoenix Mobile, they're going to give you 10 free lookups. So you can try it out. Now, what I mean by a lookup is 10 free uses in an appraisal. So you can do 10 appraisals on the iPad and then transfer that data into Appraise It. And as long as you're transferring into the same report, that doesn't count as a new use. I should say not lookup, but 10 uses. Um, and then it's like a buck a use after that. So if you, if you want to take your iPad out into the field, um, then uh, you, you, can, you can use it and, and, and fill everything out in the field. And then you can and take pictures with your iPad. Now, unless you have one of like really new iPads, I probably wouldn't recommend it because the camera's not that great. But the camera on the iPad 3 and 4 are pretty good. Um, and especially also the, the camera on your iPhone 4 or 5, 4S or 5 is pretty good too. The 4 is, eh, anything before that, I wouldn't even bother using it. Um, but yeah, you'll be able to transfer that data into Appraise It. Um, and it's under the Tools menu, there's a selection for, or it's under the Services menu, there's a selection for Phoenix Mobile for you to use. All right, Charles is asking about MLS data. <clears throat> Will there be a means to transfer MLS searches into the Comp Manager? No, other than you typing it indirectly. Right now, there isn't. There is a kind of a roundabout way, which is that if you enter that data into a report and then you save that report, that data is now automatically in the Comp Manager. So, in a way, yes, um, you've got to get that information into an appraisal, anyways. Um, now we do have a, a, a program that you can purchase that we'll be doing some trainings on called, um, uh, and you can call our sales department, 800-523-0872. Um, and we have a program that we've begun, begun rolling out called Grabit. And Grabit does exactly that. It allows you to grab information from your MLS and then transfer it directly into the appraisal. And of course, as soon as you do that, when you save the report, that information is now um, directly in Comp Manager. So in a way, yes. I mean, you're going to have to get that information into your report anyway. So whether you use Grabit to do it automatically, or whether you use, uh, you know, you just type it in manually. Either way, that information is going to be in Comp Manager because it was in your report, and anything that's in a report is in Comp Manager. Good questions. Okay. If you have any further questions, you can keep sending them, and I'll, I'll reply via email. Um, otherwise, thank you guys so much for coming, and once again, I apologize for all of these stupid uh, technical mishaps, but we're going to get them all squared away for the next time. Uh, keep, a, keep an eye out on our Facebook page. We'll announce when we're going to be doing another one of these. It should be very soon, and um, we'll also send out an email so you guys know, okay? This, if you're interested, this will actually be available uh, on demand on our YouTube page, which is youtube.com slash sfrepinc, or you can just go to the training section of the sfrep.com website, click on video library, and you'll see it there as well. It'll probably be available in a couple of hours. All right. Thank you so much, guys. Really appreciate you guys coming out, and I hope that you all have a wonderful week. Thanks a lot.